Hello, Emma here, and uh, this is a video that I've wanted to make for the longest time. I've done little versions of it, I guess, on Instagram and other things like that. But this is like a proper, short, but extremely important and useful tutorial on wrists. If you do vinyasa yoga or ashtanga vinyasa yoga or any other form of yoga where you do planks and downward facing dogs and upward facing dogs and chaturangas, then I'm sure at some point you have encountered wrist pain or uh, the classic, uh, my yoga mat is not uh, sticky enough uh, dilemma where you're slipping on your mat like this. And I'm here to tell you that all of those problems don't have to be in your practice at all. I've got a few exercises which are going to help you to uh, find strength, stability, mobility in your wrists, elbows and shoulders. And it's going to give you so much more stability and power in your practice in general and alleviate pain, I hope, completely. So, join me. So what we're gonna do, we'll start with some warm-ups, then we're gonna do some stretches, I guess, for the wrists or increasing the range of motion and mobility of the wrists. Then we're going to strengthen and then we're going to talk about positioning when your hands are on the floor. First of all, <laughs> some of the names for these exercises that I have are maybe a little bit silly because I came up with them or at least I named them. If you have a more appropriate and academic name, then you can let me know in the comments down below. But let's start with what I call sparkle fingers. So, uh, this may seem like a silly thing to do, but it's actually very important uh, and very effective. So what I'm doing, I notice also when I teach this in a class, people tend to all do it in a different way. Because you can think about your fingers going out, or you could think about your fingers coming in, like you're grabbing something, or like you're kind of flicking water off your fingers. Both of those are effective. But what I'd like you to do is feel like it's coming from the center of the palm. So basically we're creating uh, like a flexion and extension through the palm of the hand. So we want to actually warm up the whole of the hand. You could even do this wavy. There's lots of silly things that you can do with your fingers that look silly, but actually are very useful. If you are doing this with me now, then you'll start to feel that there's a pleasant warmth around the actual wrist and the forearm. And this is how, this is our little warm up for the fingers and the wrists, improving also our dexterity. Okay, the second, I guess, warm up that we'll do, which is also um, gonna st stand us in good stead as we go on, is practicing taking the hands onto the floor. Now we're not gonna load them yet, so you can just sit behind your hands. Take your hands onto the floor and feel like you spread your fingers as wide as you can. So I, for a long time, I felt like, oh, I was kind of putting my hands on the floor, but my teachers encouraged me to really spread my fingers. And now I have found that this is extremely effective in giving a strong foundation. First of all, you're taking up more space. Uh, that's probably obvious. But also, as you do that, you can probably start to feel that there's an energy that goes into the hand when you take it onto the floor in this way. Good. And it's also, you can maybe start to feel that you're spreading across the span of the palm of your hand, which is also useful. You want to feel like you have control over your fingers, over your knuckles, over your palm of your hand, because it's not just like one block of like a cartoon character. We have dexterity. We have 26 bones in each hand, uh, thereabouts. So um, we want to be able to manipulate all of them. So the second thing we'll do is progressing from taking the hands onto the mat, we're going to start to stretch, I guess, or improve the range of motion in your wrists. So this is a really great way to uh, warm up, in particular in cold weather when your joints are feeling a little bit stiffer. We take again the hands onto the floor and um, spreading the fingers nice and wide and making sure you've got a good strong relationship with the floor. So the fingers spread and pushing down, we're going to start to make circles around the wrists. The hands stay on the floor and as you move your shoulders front and back, we move the weight around and so it's going to put load in different parts of the wrist 
And as with time, you'll find that you can like increase this. Uh, now, as I'm doing this, I'm not just kind of dumping into the hands. I'm still feeling like I'm pressing into the pads of the fingers. We'll talk more about that as we talk about positioning. But this is how you can kind of also start to feel like you're mitigating the load in your wrist is as you press into the pads of the fingers, even when you're like leaning forward and creating that big flexion, look at that in the wrist, then uh, you're going to feel like you actually take some of the pressure off the wrist itself. <clears throat> cool. So what we can do now is take the hands to face out to the outside edges of the mat. And again, move from left to right. So move within a range of motion that feels okay for you, obviously. Don't do anything that feels unpleasant or rather painful. It might feel slightly challenging, that's okay. And then we can start to turn the hands if you have the range or you test your range, see if you can turn the palms all the way back to face you. And it looks unnatural because it's something we don't do, but it's also something which is uh, useful to kind of increase this range. So this might be enough. Um, from here, you might even start to sink your hips back a little bit. I haven't done this particular one for a wee while, so it's feeling a little bit more creaky than I'm used to, but it's good. So you take your time, right? And notice that these things can go up and down. That's all good. It's totally fine. We just want to work in a safe way. Ah, okay, nice. So you take your weight forward in order to return the hands back to the original position. And then from here, because we've done quite a lot of flexion, we're going to swap it over and take the back of the hand to the floor. And as you do this, now the fingers and thumbs are still trying to spread and press down. Ah, good. Okay, so let's release that for a second. And now we shake the hands out. Again, bending into the fingers is a really nice way to actually release some of this, like that. And the other classic thing that you can do to warm up the wrist is to interlace the fingers into a fist and then do what I call the disco ball, which is again, not maybe the most official name, but it feels good. You try to keep the wrists close together and the palms and the hands close together as you move in a circle in one direction and then the other. Okay, great. So. Now we're sitting here. You can sit any way you like or on a block or something. Um, that's totally cool. Let's talk about the position of the hands on the floor. And now we're going to move into some strengthening exercises. Uh, but, but before we do it, take your hands out in front of you, if you will. I'm going to turn around so you can see. If you extend your arms out and you push your hands like you're going, stop in the name of love, um, then try to pull your fingers back towards you, fingers straight as much as possible. You'll feel the top here of your forearm and notice how much active range of motion you have got without you. So I'm showing here now, if you started to add some external force onto it, you'd feel like you suddenly get more. So this hand is like the floor, but naturally this is about where it goes to or notice where it goes to on you. And then you might be less surprised that it feels challenging to do this because it's not something that you have in your active range of motion. So how can we actually start to improve this and increase it? First of all, we practice doing this. And then my other favorite exercise, which I call Spider-Man, <laughs> because you take the hands out in front of you, palms facing up, and then it's like you shoot spider out of your wrists. <laughs> right? A rich imagination, you know, goes a long way. So here we're spreading the fingers again. Now try to keep your arm straight and your finger straight as you bring the palm to face up and then directly towards you. Oh, now this is really good because this is the part. Um, we're strengthening both the front and the back of the forearm. Woo! And it really creates a lot of heat here immediately. So this is a lovely thing I like to do in classes when we're going to do arm balances or something else like that. Right. And so I learned this particular one, for example, from my husband, who is a drummer and his wrist, wrist dexterity is something else. His fingers and wrists are very powerful. So um, it's something that I integrated into my own classes. Um, 
borrowing from music into yoga. Okay, so good. Give the arms and hands a little shake because I'm sure you will feel that it has built up quite a lot of uh, heat and tension into the forearm and that's a good thing. Okay, and then we release it by giving it a shake. Okay, cool. So next, we take the hands onto the floor once more and the whole, the spread the fingers out. So all the fingers are on the floor and the palm of the hand is on the floor. From here, so your shoulders will be over your wrists. We're going to leave the fingers on the floor as we lift the palm, hinging at the knuckle. So some of my students find that this is like immediately like, oh my goodness me, like it's totally impossible. Some of them are totally okay. It depends on your, like, I guess, joint mobility all over your body. Also depends what you do with your hands all day. So this is a really wonderful way to start strengthening the wrists, this one. So if you hold it, and then if this feels like easy and like nothing at all, you could try it with your knees a little bit back. As you move your knees back, more pressure goes down through the arms which have to hold your weight. So you could go even more. <laughs> and then, I just uh, learned this actually too, is that if this is, if you can hold this, then you could actually, I recommend doing it with the knees down, not up. You could actually do even lowering to the floor. I can feel my wrist like going, woo as you do that. Even maybe a little cobra. Now if this causes you any pain at all, Please don't do that. <laughs> Stay at like level one, which is here. So I've gone ahead very quickly and gone, blah, 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 here are all the many options that you can do. But you can start just by finding this lift of the palm. Nice. So in a similar vein, another thing that you can practice in order to strengthen the whole hand is the cupcake fingers. Now that's not my name. It is equally ridiculous as the names that I came up with. <laughs> I guess it's like as if you were holding a cupcake underneath your hands. I don't know. Anyway, so the fingers are on the floor, but the palm is lifted. And here, this is a really nice thing to practice. You could do it in a, in a tabletop. You could do it in like a, a knees down plank. I often find myself doing it in a downward facing dog. You could do it just one hand in a downward facing dog. That's really handy. Ha, 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 ha. I didn't even mean to do that. Okay, <laughs> that's really handy. Okay, who knew that uh, hands and fingers had so many puns in them? I don't know. All right, and uh, this is something that you'll find um, is a good variation to play with. I don't know, maybe you could even do plank. Ooh, that's a lot, oh my goodness. I can't do an up dog. Fine, so that's something to play with, right? If you're feeling that this is uh, somewhere that you can get to. One more little strengthening slash mobility exercise I want to show with, show you is using a ball. Now this is one of those like um, massage balls for the body. You could use any kind of ball that you have, a tennis ball or child's toy or dog's thing, whatever. Hold it in your wrist, uh, in your palm and close your hand around it. You could even give it a squish that's gonna uh, strengthen your wrist too and the palm of the hand. And then holding that ball will start to make a circle with the wrist. Oh, and so it's a different set of muscles as you make the circle because your hand is curled in in this like dinosaur position, <laughs> right? For me, it feels really like, this is something again also I've introduced fairly recently and I find that it makes a big, um, it feels good and like nourishing, like strengthening and mo mobilizing in a good way. So obviously we do both hands. Oh. Ooh, there's also clicking for me here. That's a good one. Okay, nice. So your hands by this point are probably feeling like, oh, maybe a wee bit tired, but maybe also just like alive, which is great. And so now I'm gonna show you a couple more techniques, which I really hope. So the first part is like drills that you can do in your own time. And now from now on, we're gonna look at technique that you can bring into your regular practice, which is gonna make it much more skillful. So as I said from before, <clears throat> the first thing you do 
is you have your hands on the floor spread. Fingers spread as wide as you can get. And that's important. And so make sure your hands aren't too close together. We want to feel that they are underneath the shoulders and maybe even a little bit wider. Depending on the tightness of your shoulders, you line up either your middle finger pointing forward or maybe even the index finger pointing forward. And that kind of gives you this kind of like open, slightly open position, which is a lot stronger. So I quite like that. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, the second thing we're going to do is press down into the pads, the finger pads of your fingers. So where your fingerprints are. And it's almost like you have a feeling like you're kind of squishing your hands together. Remember what we did like this? Again, we're engaging and making it stronger. I tried this with one of my classes and we did, we did a kind of <laughs> when we were, had the hands on the floor and they found that it helped with the wrists for basically everyone. Um, so here, we want to feel like you're kind of squishing the yoga mat or it's like, I use this, it's like you're gathering fabric with your grip. The, because you have a sticky mat, it's not going to gather, but you're going to start to get the power and you'll get your forearm switching on. So that's something that you're going to do. And this is like the beginning of how not to slip when you have your hands on a yoga mat. Many of my students complain when they have a brand new mat. They're like, oh no, and then they take their hands onto the floor in order to not slip. I'm like, dude, you don't have to do that. I know some mats are sl slippier than others, but you should be able to hold yourself everywhere. And you will be able to if you grip. So we grip the mat like you're gathering it together. And you grip, or rather, feel like you hug your arms together. And you'll feel that the forearms switch on and the shoulders and maybe even the pecs. Okay, that's a wonderful thing to do. Now, we've got hands, we've got uh, forearms. Let's move up the arm. You might see that here I have a little, what we call a micro bend in the elbow. So it's not locked out. We're not collapsing down. When it's locked out, the weight goes straight through the joint into the wrist. You can also see that there's more pressure going into this. You can even see the color maybe of the wrist. But if I put a little bend in, I get more space in this joint and this joint. And it means that you can find the shoulder. If you lock your arms, if you try, how much can you push up into your shoulder? So if you push against the floor, how much movement do you have? Try it. And then if you bend into the elbow, whoa, suddenly there's much more space of movement into the shoulder. And this is the key thing, is that if you're holding onto the mat, put a little bend into your elbow. If you lift up into the shoulders, suddenly it feels like you've got less weight going down through your hands, which is a key thing to having less uh, pressure and pain in the wrist. So it's, all, it's like you're holding your weight in your shoulders here. Now obviously in a tabletop that's easier, but we should be able to do it in a plank as well. So in your plank, uh, first of all, you have your legs on, your core on, you're gripping the yoga mat with your hands, squishing it, hugging the forearms towards each other, and then lifting up through the shoulders. So then it actually becomes a lot easier than if you just let your weight go down through the joints. <laughs> Suddenly it feels exhausting. <laughs> but if you're elevated and you're engaged, then it's like you're levitating. Yes, so if your wrist's a little bit tired, because this is a lot all in one go, give them a little shake. And then I have just one more thing to show you, which is downward facing dog. Uh, very similar to the plank, in fact. The only difference is that your weight is going back the way. And so we're gonna be pushing. And the other difference is, is that whereas in a plank, your shoulders are over your wrists, obviously in a downward facing dog, your shoulders are here and your hands are here. <clears throat> So we have the fingers spread. Now, there's an interesting thing that happens in Downward Facing Dog, which I'm sure you're aware of, is that we want to be protracting the shoulders because it makes them stronger and it gives us space for the neck. If I turn around this way, sometimes, and in particular, I at the beginning had my shoulders rolling in quite a lot, but I have over time strengthened my shoulders to be able to, now my shoulders are naturally quite narrow, so it still looks like they're quite close together, but it's much better. 
if I power them up, push, you have more space in the neck. Uh, now, sometimes when you do that, it sometimes feels like the index finger knuckle lifts up off the floor because your arms are externally rotating, so your hand wants to lift. Fight to get that index finger knuckle down because that's the thing that's going to take the weight out of your wrists. So if we come back again to our table position, we have the index finger knuckle pressing, all the pads of the fingers pressing, and gripping the mat with your hands. You can have the index finger knuckle facing forward, and then grip, grip, grip. And then, just like in the plank, can you feel like your forearms hug together? So I like to think about the elbow slightly pointing out towards the lateral sides, left and right, and then spinning down towards the floor. That's going to engage around the armpit. And then we have, through a bent elbow, more space to push through the shoulder. The other thing about downward facing dog is the shorter your dog, the less you have to push through your shoulders. So if you want to challenge yourself with it, lengthen your stance. Okay, that's all I'm going to share for now because you could easily start talking about the core and how, what else you need to switch on and no, no, no. But I think that that's already quite a lot of information and plenty of stuff to try out. So please do let me know how you get on. And if you have any questions or concerns, I'd love to hear them down below. Um, and I hope that that helps having a better relationship with your hands on the floor and happy flowing. See you soon.